After seizing power to widespread acclaim last month, Mali's junta was, has faced a reality check ahead of weekend talks about a transition back to civilian rule, stung by sharp criticism from some political leaders and teachers' unions. The junta, the National Committee for the Salvation of the People, now faces pressure to show it can do better a challenge made more difficult by economic sanctions imposed by West African neighbours after the coup. The coalition that led protests against Keita before the coup and welcomed the military's intervention blasted the CNSP for not having invited its leaders to preliminary talks about the transition. Joining us now is Adolfos Mawolo, a news editor from the West Africa Democracy Radio. Um, it's a trans-regional broadcaster headquartered in Dakar. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you very much also for hosting me on your program. I'm delighted to be here with you today. It's a pleasure. Um, some analysts say this is a sign that the people of Mali may not be able to accept the military leaders in the long run. What changed? They seem to have welcomed them initially. Well, uh, the history of the conflict in uh, Mali um, initially informed why the people accepted the military junta or the coup. Because uh, since 2012, Mali has been ravaged by a jihadist-led violence. And in between, there have been intercommunal clashes that have resulted in the death of uh, thousands of people. On top of that, there is a uh, massive official corruption. And because of this, many people have been agitating and they were really much uh, fed up with the government. So when the military led a coup, they were happy to embrace them. But uh, mind you, these sort of events are really short-lived because what happens is that usually expectations are high after these sort of events. And once with time, the people who lead these sort of events cannot deliver, then of course the people will turn against them. And from the very start, what's happening now um, and what really resulted in the teachers union uh, taking a position or coming out publicly to rebuke the leaders of the coup is the fact that uh, they had made a statement that was contrary to, uh, th that re in effect that they had not um, discussed with the teachers' unions, uh, unions, that was that they were in talks with them over demands uh, relating to salary, which in fact, in effect, was not true. So that was a mishap, and these are beginnings that lead to bigger agitations. Uh, do you subscribe to the regime accommodating the opposition into the transition plan? Uh, there is a break in between. I really didn't hear your question. Okay, Can you I'll repeat, repeat that? I'll, I'll repeat that. There is a transition uh, effort to make a transition plan. My question is, are you in support? Do you subscribe to the regime accommodating the opposition into this plan? Well, they cannot do without the opposition. So... The opposition laid the foundation for whatever change has occurred in Mali. They are a strong force and they demonstrated that over many months following the uh, legislative elections of April and May. So the opposition led by or inspired uh, by Mahmoud Dikor led street demonstrations that paralyzed the entire government. And so it will be foolhardy for the military junta to want to ignore these people. Um, it will be an unnecessary distraction and it will complicate matters for Mali, but also for the junta who have come to power, promising to overturn the excesses of the government of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. And so they cannot ignore them. And that's why yesterday they had a chaotic start um, with these national consultations, when the opposition said that at some point of the negotiations over the formation of a transitional uh, government, they had been left out and they demand to form part of every 
discussion that will take place that will lead Mali to a place of peace and stability. And so they will be compelled. They will really, really be compelled because the military junta, they have been isolated regionally and internationally sort of. Internally, they wouldn't also want to be detested by their people. They wouldn't want to be isolated by their people. They need that vital moral support that will inspire them on to make the right decisions. And so they really can't ignore the opposition because the opposition has demonstrated that they have strength. They can pull people on the streets and they can overturn whatever they want. And so I think the military will take a lesson from what happened yesterday and they will learn to work with all parties there, in Mali as they frame form for this, um, uh, transition. a foundation for peace or return the country to, to peace and stability. Uh, Mr. Mawolo, there is a time frame for this plan to take effect, you know, considering some of the um, um, sanctions you mentioned to get them off the back of Mali. So uh, one would wonder, um, how long do you see this uh, disagreement lingering for and how quickly will the military respond and integrate these opposition members uh, and stop the agitations? <laughs> What I think it's an ongoing process, so we cannot determine at the moment how long negotiations will drag on before Mali can really form a transitional government 